All right. So this is a video log that I think is is pretty momentous in uh, in my life, and I feel it's important that it gets commemorated, or at least what's the word I'm looking for, that it is kept in posterity. So, in anyways, it all started yesterday when we held a conference call for Open Data Day Toronto 2014. There was a whole bunch of us on the conference call. And basically, it was a way to see how we could all collaborate. After the call, I had to make another call to someone else because I had completely forgotten something and I needed to apologize to that person. That person being Keith Liu from Make Web Not War. So we got to talking about a few things and, and we went on and on. And then in passing, I don't know how it came to this, but I made mention about the open government tour, the 30 and 90 tour that I was thinking of putting together uh, for this past summer. He says, this is a great idea. It's an awesome idea. I love the idea. Like, yeah, it was a pretty good idea when it came along, but I bit off way more than I could chew. I didn't give myself enough time to put it together and, and it fell through. Plus on top of it, I had some motorcycle problems with the bike that I had purchased. So everything about that tour completely went kaputs. And I said, well, he says, well, you know what, Richard, you, you, you actually catch me at a very interesting time because if you hadn't called when you did, I was about to write a check to sponsor this other thing. I have to get it off the books today. Like it has to be done today. But I'm thinking about giving you the money instead. And I tell him, it's like, well, hold on a second here. You know, I haven't, I haven't thought about this tour for, you know, six, seven months. You know, the budget, you know, he asked me, well, did you put a budget together? Yeah, it called for about $10,000 and I have all the information. But, you know, I'm not, before we, you, you sign anything over to me, like, give me a time to breathe here. <laughs> and the, the example that I told him, it's like, you know, you wish for something to happen and then all of a sudden... Someone says it can happen and you're kind of like in shock. Like you can't believe it. So I was like, well, give me, let me send you the documentation I had in mind, right? We, we need more time. Like it was a 10 to 15 minute conversation that we talked about this. I was like, give me a time to collect my thoughts a little bit here. And, you know, it didn't work the first time. I don't want it to fail a second time. Let me send you my documentation because I want to make sure that you understand what it is that I was trying to do. And can we talk about this next week? He's like, no, no, I have to write this check like today or at the very least, you know, before Monday. So I'm like, well, do you mind? Well, how about we do a call or how about we meet tomorrow? Tomorrow being today and it's a Saturday. He said, yeah, sure, let's do that. And then we started talking about the tour and, and what it is that I had in mind and, and some of the values and some of the reasons. And then they started talking about how this meshes well with what they're trying to do and how, more importantly, that we believe in the same thing, which is open government and open data, for the most part, has terrible, terrible marketing, has terrible, terrible PR. It's viewed as this kind of civic engagement, dull, political thing that really is not particularly engaging when it's a quite opposite, quite the opposite. So we started talking about how that could look like. One of the big things when I set up the open government tour, and the reason why I call it a tour is because I want it to be more than just a presentation given to 30 cities in 90 days. It has to be engaging. The mentality I had is like, it has to be a, like a rock concert tour that goes across the country. And they were totally in line with that. And then the element that we all agreed in as well and is that it has to be a collaborative effort. The community, there's gotta be a community demand. It has to be put together by the community in terms of what it would look like because, you know, we're preaching the values of open gov and open data, which are collaboration, transparency, and accountability. A project whose purpose is to market 
open gov and open data should reflect those philosophies and values. And I was very strong to talk about that and they were totally in line. And as a matter of fact, they had even better ideas on how to make it collaborative and open. So much so that it looks as though it's going to be integrated with, with one of the projects. They have this, they're trying to put together a federated website for open data sets. There are a few of them that exist out there, but there's really not one really great one that everyone knows about. And I think the guys at Web Not War have a good idea about as to how it could be done. And they showed me their idea and I was like, you know, this is, this mashes perfectly well what, what the, the open government tour would be all about. So after this love fest for about an hour about how it could be done and, and some people would want to get involved. So after we talked for about an hour and we're all pretty much aligned, I say, yeah, yeah, I think, um, I think I'm okay with you writing me a check. And I also, it's the, the check is not from, that's the other thing too. I'm very strong about this and I annoy a lot of people about this is I refuse to get paid for any of the work that I do in open government or open data. The thing is, is an open government tour across 30 cities across Canada in 90 days has expenses, motorcycle, gas, that kind of stuff. So they did write me a check or they're in the process, I guess, of writing me a check that would cover those expenses. Not my time, just the, the, the physical expenses of doing a tour like that. And we're going to be spending essentially the next year in, in creating a collaborative effort around this tour. I'm really excited and scared. Scared. Oh my. That's the other thing too. I told them I was like, you know, Tonight, about, I guess, an hour from now, I'm going to be serving quarter chicken dinners at Swiss Chalet. And at one point, I'm probably going to stop, you know, in middle of handing someone a, a plate. And I'm going to say to myself, it's like, what the hell did I just agree to? <laughs> you know, so it's a very interesting time for me. And obviously, after me and Keith and Bruce, who was also on the call, Bruce Chow was on the call, um, was done. I, you know, what do you do when you got big news, right? You, you call your mom <laughs> and she was very excited. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I thought for me, it would be very important to document this moment because it's a pretty significant part of my life, you know, I've said for a long time that I really wanted to ride across Canada on a motorcycle. The fact that I can put my two passions, which is riding motorcycles and open government and open data together is it's tremendous. Um, the fact that the guys that make web, not war, Keith and Bruce understand what it is that I'm trying to do and that they believe in me means so much. The fact that this actually has legs, like they're not, that, that's the other thing too, is Keith and Bruce aren't just writing me a check and say, go at it. You know, they actually want to help in the process and building this, this collaborative community for open gov and open data and marketing it right to Canadians. You know, it, a lot of the times, you know, you find yourself alone in, in thinking certain ways. There's a great community in Toronto, both with the government and, you know, uh, within the social innovators. But at the same time, it's, it's always very surprising when someone comes out of nowhere and says, you know, I believe in what it is you're trying to do. And I want to help you do it. Feel very lucky today. Feel very lucky. It's kind of weird how things turn out. You know, I've said I want to live my own life and, and 
and just go with wherever it takes me instead of being sort of stuck here. When I made the announcement for the 30 and 90 tour saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and it failed, it was hard to admit it to people. But one of the values that I've always written, sorry, let me rephrase that. One of the values that I've written in, in the principles of leading an open life is, you know, don't hide your mistakes. Wear them like a badge, you know, learn from them. The first attempt didn't work out for the open government tour. I didn't hide that fact. Now it's being revisited and um, it looks as though the second time around it's going to be a success. I'm sure there's going to be obstacles and, and, and bumps along the road that's going to happen. But what me, Keith and Bruce firmly believe in is, is this organic nature of what it has to be like. If we put it in a silo, it's going to fail. But if we let the community help build it and, and guide it along the way, and if we remain flexible, if we remain agile, here's why we create, let's test it, feedback, and build on it, and just keep cycling through and, and making something better. And the guys, Keith and Bruce, feel the same way as well. And this open government tour is going to be a kind of like, like a proof of concept as to how it could look like. Version one was not a success. My version by myself, biting off more than I could chew. Now we're going to have the right technology. We're going to have the right people. We got the right mentality. And like I said, it's, it's nice to see people that are just as committed into something as you are. And I'm not, and, and Keith and Bruce are part of it, but the rest of the Toronto community, I'm sure, you know, they, they back this up. They're so awesome to work with and work towards projects for. I don't know. I'm just rambling now because I feel like Sally failed a little bit at the Oscars. You're like, you like me, you really like me. It also tells me that uh, what I'm doing is the right thing. My Einstein job, working for free and open gov and open data, being true to your values and principles. You know, working with people, not working for people or working towards your own personal selfish agenda, but actually working with people. I truly understand now that spirit of collaboration and and now it's just going to start manifesting itself in a much bigger scale. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. But excited.